Hey guys, it's Kay from KS Anonymous, and I am back today with another episode of r slash Ita, or r slash am I the a-hole. Ita for buying stuff my sister is allergic to. I'm 17 female, my sister is 15 female. She has a mild strawberry allergy. It could never ever cause breathing issues unless she ate an entire punnet, but it can cause hives. She keeps nicking my bath products, shampoo, body butter slash scrub, lotions, etc., which are the only thing I really spend out on. I buy my stuff when I need it and most of the remaining money goes untouched. I usually get a floral or fruit scent like rose or pomegranate, but I like strawberry and never buy it because of her allergies. I've told her multiple times to stop taking my stuff, but she still goes into my room and takes it. So lately, as stuff has been running out, I've been replacing it with the exact same thing, but the strawberry version. Basically, everything I own now contains strawberry in some way. Everything is clearly labeled, but earlier my sister went into my room and without looking at the label, used some strawberry hand lotion and now her hands itch. She and mom have both cussed me out, saying I can't have this stuff in the house, but I maintain that if she didn't go into my room and take my things, this wouldn't be a problem. Aita? Info, I pay out for the fancy stuff that contains actual strawberries, not the cheaper stuff that just has the scent, which is why her hands are itchy, because she basically squirted strawberry juice on them. This is also why I'm so annoyed about her taking stuff, because it's expensive and the only time I really spend out on anything is when I get these. It's difficult to make a call on that because I know that like siblings, they just tend to borrow without asking and that's just a thing. But at the same time, she shouldn't do that. It's frustrating because like at the same- <laughs> Uh, I would say your sister technically shouldn't. She should be responsible enough to be like, this has strawberries in it. It would cause a problem with me. I shouldn't use it. But I can also see why they might be upset with you when you purposefully got things that she'd be allergic to. But I I'm gonna go with like, it's it, it wasn't like, it's not like you put it in her stuff. It's not like you secretly did things to teach her a lesson. Like, it's clearly labeled, as you said. I don't- I don't think it makes you an a-hole, but I'm sure your mom doesn't see it that way. Aita, for my cheeky suggestion to the customer when they ask me what they should eat, I work in a pizza hut and my manager just told me that somebody wrote a complaint to the customer service about me. It was a customer who called yesterday. So I received this call about 11 a.m. It was a woman with a very raspy voice. The conversation, according to my memory, went like this. Hello, Pizza Hut Delivery. May I take your order, please? I have a fever. Uh, are you all right, ma'am? <laughs> and I've been coughing. I had a crappy day, too and went on ranting about something I couldn't remember. So, what would you like to order? I am very sick, okay? What should I eat? You tell me. I was dumbfounded. Um, medicine maybe? Panadol? I, I don't know, maybe a doctor can answer that? I didn't call! Evang Pizza Hut! Delivery for Panadol! said a bunch of things I didn't quite catch before hanging up. I thought it was a prank call of sorts, never knew that the woman would write a complaint letter about me. My manager said I'm not in trouble, but should not have said what I said. That was cheeky and rude. Aita? Who calls and doesn't start with what they want and instead just tells them like, I'm sick, these are my symptoms, and then asks for what you should eat? Like, at the- <sighs> Maybe in hindsight you could have said, you know, I can't I don't really know how to give you advice on that But I don't know if there was a right answer I don't know why there's a lady calling in basically telling her symptoms to the pizza person. I okay Ita for apparently influencing my best buddy to pursue a divorce from his wife through some offhanded comments I made my work best friend found out that his wife had been cheating on him with a married douchebag for nine consecutive months of 2019. My friend's mood was shot, he looked absolutely crushed, and seemed to be floating through his life. 
Nothing I said or did with him could cheer him up, no matter how much I tried to help him. He was even weeping publicly at some points. It was pretty terrible to watch. Starting of this year, apparently, his wife left a fair fog land, started focusing on reconciliation with my best friend, and the mood of my friend seemed to lift, though he did confide to me that he still was struggling with dealing with it all. I recommended him to join the Surviving Infidelity subreddit, read some books, get an individual counselor, the usual advice in dealing with betrayal BS. And he did all that, except he seemed to still be depressed. He told me that his wife seemed to be genuinely remorseful and even upped the ante with regards to certain aspects of their romance slash relationship, but he still felt at odds with the whole idea of reconciliation. Maybe I should have shut up and not spoke here, but I didn't. I told him that his wife may be trying to re-earn his love and fix him all up, but there comes a point where you just can't go on any further with a person anymore, and that there are plenty of women in the world who wouldn't have even texted another man flirtatiously while in a relationship, let alone cheat. I told him life is short, he has no children, and maybe he needed to see if keeping his wife around was going to benefit him and his health in the long run. I said he needed to decide whether he'd have the patience to constantly keep tabs on whether his wife could be faithful for another 40 years of marriage. And then I left it at that. We never spoke of the topic again, and his mood seemed to improve drastically the start of February this year. Well, I just found out this week that this whole time my friend had been pursuing a divorce. Surprisingly, his mood had been great even though he's going through something in divorce I wouldn't wish on anybody. He credits me for inspiring him to live life to its fullest again and that he wasn't going to drag himself down with a cheater and a liar anyway. I'm telling you, you'd think he won the lottery with how he walked. It's like a weight was lifted off of him. I was happy for him, man. He's my best friend. But his parents, whom I truly don't gel well with, ring me up. How they got my number? My dang best buddy gave it to them, asking them to ask me why my buddy and his wife were divorcing. His parents were furious. They were angry that my friend seems nonchalant about the whole experience and are upset about the mental health of the wife, who is apparently crying herself to sleep every night over this. Also, the wife's side of the family, sisters and parents, are crap-talking me for the part I played in my friend's decision to divorce her. I influenced Buddy, apparently. Ita? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Oh my god. First of all, uh, like, first of all, he is responsible for his own actions. And if, if you giving your thoughts about something prompted him to do what he did, that's his own problem. It's not like you were in his ear constantly, like, when are you gonna get rid of that lady? Like, it's not like that. However, I wonder about the maturity of your friend because I don't know any mature adult who would tell their parents to call their friend and have them explain <laughs> why they made a decision. That is dumb. That is really dumb. I, mm, I'm sorry, but your, your buddy might be the a-hole a little bit. Obviously, the wife is an a-hole for cheating on him, especially that long. Like, it's hard for me to accept the idea, like, she's remorseful when she was <laughs> cheating that long. Um, uh, but you know what? It's their personal business. But your buddy, um, he needs to grow up a little bit. Aita for not allowing my father in at my sister's wedding. He showed up to the wedding on the basis of a fake invite. My father, who now lives in another continent, left our family for his current wife when I was 13 and my older sister was 17. My sister never forgave him and the last time she saw him was 12 years ago in court. She got married recently and I was in charge of the whole affair. It was a pretty big wedding as my brother-in-law comes from a prominent political family. On the day of the wedding, my father showed up to her wedding venue unannounced and uninvited, wife and three little kids in tow, who I assume were my biological half-siblings. As soon as I was informed about his arrival, I dashed to the entrance where he stood waiting and tried to deal with the situation without anyone knowing. I didn't want my sister and mother to know about it as they were in a good mood and I didn't want to ruin that. 
I also had to attend to some very important guests and wanted to fix the situation quickly. It turned out that my sister's former best friend slash step-cousin, Dorothy, contacted our father and gave him a fake story about how my sister really wanted him back in her life and that the only reason she didn't send him an official invite was because of our mother. Apparently, he was told that my sister asked Dorothy to send the invite on her behalf. It was an awkward situation. I had to explain that Dorothy and my sister had a huge fight last month and my sister ended up severing all his highs with her. It finally dawned on him that he was used as a pawn to ruin my sister's wedding. He was heartbroken, but insisted I allow him into a distant secluded spot to at least view the ceremony from a distance. I told him I couldn't do that and asked him to leave before anyone from my mother's family showed up. His wife was furious and the oldest half-sibling silently sobbed. I was running out of time, so I asked the hotel security to escort the family out of the venue. I felt like an a-hole, but I didn't want my sister's day ruined. Ita? Oh my god! <laughs> That's such a horrible situation and position to be put in. So, obviously the real a-hole here is Dorothy. Dorothy, what the heck is wrong with you? Um, and this is so sad because, like, obviously the dad made a terrible choice. Um, but he showed up. He showed up and he wanted to see his daughter get married. And that's so hard because obviously he didn't know that his daughter didn't want him there. And like, that's just awful. Like who messes with people like that? Um, I think that's just like an impossible choice to have to make. And in this situation, you did the best you could. I, it's better than having a whole scene caused just to make him feel a little better and then probably would have ended poorly anyway because she probably would have been like, why are you here? And like freaking out and being upset. So, I mean, probably that decision made the, the least people upset. Um, but thanks, Dorothy, for like messing with a bunch of people's emotions. That's horrible. Aita for publicly rebuking a cousin for following tradition when it benefits her, but opting out when it doesn't. A long-standing tradition in my family is the giving of lucky money on Vietnamese New Year. The tradition involves married members of the family gifting unmarried members lucky money, as a symbolic passing of good luck from one generation to the next. The tradition is more about the act itself rather than the money. People are only expected to give what they can. My cousins and I have benefited greatly from this tradition. To put it in perspective, I am 26 and have accumulated approximately $10,000 over the years. Fiona, my 31-year-old cousin, would have collected at least as much, and certainly much more. Fiona's partner has also received lucky money since dating her. Last year, Fiona married her partner and I entered a de facto marriage with mine, which means that for the first time, Fiona and I will be giving, instead of receiving, money this Vietnamese New Year. Or at least, that's what the expectation is. On Vietnamese New Year, Fiona and her husband stated that they are no longer participating in this tradition. When other family members asked why they're opting out, the husband explained that they simply don't believe in it. I retorted with a, what does that even mean? Fiona's husband responded with some spiel about only trusting in facts and logic. Visibly scoffing, I rebutted, Must be some convenient facts and logic for you to only opt out now, and not last year or any of the years before that. Fortunately, a more mature cousin than I intervened and quelled the adversity before it escalated. That all happened a month ago. I am cognizant that my actions weren't the most pleasant, but given the context, I felt that it was not only benign, but that it was also justified. Of course, I'm aware that I'm not exactly free from bias here. So, Aita? No. <laughs> Yo, I don't believe in that when I'm the one who has to give the money. I'm okay with benefiting thousands of dollars, but now, now I don't believe, yeah, that's, that's BS. That's such BS. Now, these next two stories were sent to my email to be shared. There are going to be some words substituted, uh, for reasons. I live in Italy and that's why my English is not exceptional. As you know, my country suffers greatly from the virus. Many have lost their lives, including my mother. 
My daughter is incredibly terrified of the whole thing, usually worries about things because of her Asperger's. We took a walk in the countryside to make her feel better. We didn't think there was anyone there. There was a group of bad boys who laughed at her because of her mask. The leader approaches her and pulls down her mask and coughs in her face, saying, "Ew, germs! Then the group proceeds toward her and sings, Kerna, Kerna, you'll find yourself in a coffin! Again and again. My daughter was crying, screaming, and hyperventilating. I was busy with the GPS to notice what was going on when I saw her and I ran to her. She told me what they did and I punched the leader in the face so hard that he fell. He was covered in blood and crying. The others ran away. Then I spat in his face. Was I too hard on this boy? Now, I gave my personal opinion in the responding email, but I'm sharing it for you all to give yours, so be sure to comment what you think. Wow, this is such a weight off of my mind. I have really mixed feelings about the whole situation and the way I behaved. From the moment I was born, my then 16-year-old mother abandoned me at my grandmother's house. Just like that. She didn't even breastfeed me. She never wrote letters. She never called. It was like she disappeared from the face of the earth. On my 18th birthday, the first thing she ever said to me was a request for money. My lovely grandmother yelled at her and told her to never call us again. I thought that would be the last I would ever hear from her. So I moved on with my life. I married, had kids and grandkids. Then decades later, I found out my mother has requested that they trace me. This was about a year ago. She gave them my name and eventually they found me. At first, I turned down visiting her, but then deep down I was like, well, she's my mother, I have to visit her. When I saw her, she didn't even apologize for the abandonment. She just begged me to take her home with me and care for her. I was really insulted. She was like, I'm your mother. Children have to care for their parents when they get older. I told her that I would think about it and that I would like her to meet my children and grandchildren. When I brought my offspring to meet her, she didn't even look at them. I even put the toddler on her lap and she shoved him off and made him cry. I was so angry. I asked my daughters and son-in-law to take the kids outside so I can talk to her. She was like, are you going to take me home now? And I said no. She was actually confused as to why I wouldn't do that. I was so angry, I yelled at her, swore at her. I told her she was going to die alone with no one because she was so selfish and cared about nobody but herself. Then I left. The next day the care home called me and told me that she had died. And I felt really bad because often when people get older their mind goes and it was like I was yelling at a mentally ill person. But then I remembered she was perfectly sane when she abandoned me. Am I awful? Again, I gave my opinions uh, in the return email and... They probably would like to hear yours as well. So go ahead and give your thoughts on these and all the other ones in the comments below. So that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and drop a like. And really quickly, I would like to thank my patrons. So up on the screen, you should see my face palmers and my crazy K's. <laughs> thank you all so much for supporting me in that way. If you're interested in becoming a patron, checking out the original stories that we went over in today's video, or sending me an email for possible inclusion in a future video, all of that information is in the description box, so be sure to check it out. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!